Hello mate and welcome back. In this video I'm going to work on this render that I did during a short live stream that I did funnily enough today but you won't be seeing it. Um, and there's been some questions about how I make my portraits look photo realistic because this is a good start but you can still see that this is computer generated and there are tricks that we can do to kind of help with that a little bit. So what I want to do is I want to post work this and see if I can make it look a little bit more realistic. So the first thing I want to do is just fill in the background with white and that's just going to add a little bit of um, light to the background and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to adjust that afterwards but I want to work on the actual render itself first and get rid of any impurities that I can see that need to be resolved because there are some artifacts here that you can't necessarily see now but as I zoom in you'll be able to see them. For example what we've got is these strange cracks on the knuckles so we're going to fix those using the spot healing brush tool to make sure we have the correct layer selected and we're just gonna whip around doesn't have to be perfect as you can see steady hand not vital here and that just removes that and yes it does kind of change things a little bit if you really wanted to minimize the amount of that that's going on this is where the steady hand comes in and you can just go over it with a much much smaller spot healing brush tool just to kind of remove that artifact but without damaging too much of the texture around it and do the same there and there and it is a bit finicky if you don't use a big brush you just have to go over it a couple of times but you just want to remove that from this there's no reason for it to be there even if you can't see it in the when you look at the, the image from a distance which you really can't with this but these kind of lines, if someone were to zoom in on your image, they might still be there even in a greatly uh, reduced image. So you just want to try and clear it up as much as possible. My steady hand's letting me down a bit today, so I'm just going to fatten up my brush a smidge. And if you're not happy with what it does, go over it again. Keep going over it. I'm not doing non-destructive editing. I should be doing this on a separate layer. Realistically. As you can see, there's this weird crack that comes all the way down from the eye. There we go. Let's get rid of that. Let's check around the rest of the face and make sure that there's no more of that going on. And it seems like we're pretty good there. Check around here. Make sure there's no obvious splits in the texture which I think we're good so that brings me to the next thing which is this hair that's creeping through um, so there's there's things we can do there are things we can do I can create a new layer I'm definitely going to create a new layer for this one and what I can do we can use the clone stamp tool which is this one I can take a clone of that area minimize the brush and then bring it up it is going to be tricky there's no doubt about that because this the way that this area is laid out but you can kind of do what you need to do and if you need to use just the brush tool brush is too big there we go and then you can just paint in the colors that you need yeah there's going to be a bit of a loss of texture but it's still preferable to and we can always just add some noise afterwards you want to sample a section that you know has got roughly the right color that you want you need to drop the opacity and the flow down to make it blend a little bit easier you can do that as well there is a fairly solid ridge there so that's fine and then you can just grab that
Yeah, this is a concentrating job, it has to be said. It's so it's it does look a bit weird. I will be the first to admit that. But you can keep tweaking it and painting over it and trying to get it right until you've got it where you want it to be. And then we can see from further away it just looks fine. You know, it's um it's, it's what it's, it's, it'll do for now. So we can merge those two layers, merge layers like that. And now we know that, that that hair poking through the ear is no longer an issue. So I can't see any more problems in terms of like th weird things that happen in Das Studio that can't happen IRL, like hair sticking through skin or whatever. So now we can move on to the next part of this, which is copying this layer. And then we're going to go into our channels. We're going to select red red layer. Control A to select everything. And then we're just going to jog that left by one pixel. Select green. Choose everything again. Move that right by one pixel. Then we come back to our RGB. And it looks weird. But this is how we create pseudo, like pretend chromatic aberration. And then we can reduce the opacity of this down a little bit quite a lot actually we only really want the chromatic aberration to be a really kind of minor 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 detail so that's cool next thing I want to do is paint over some light leaks from the background we're actually going to add some kind of room or something in the background maybe in a minute but we just grab the brush bring up our flow and our opacity again get a nice big brush there and we're just gonna this is basically painting in our own bloom effect and then we can reduce the opacity of that down as well that looks nice so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to quickly grab an image of some description sort of just like a room in the background um, I've probably got one saved in my downloads if I'm let's have a look large icons boom, 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 boom. That one I'll do. So we into our scene, drag it to the background, control T. Now remember it's only got to cover this top half of the image because that's the only bit of the background that's visible. Now we can remove that. And then that just adds a little bit of something in the background, which is nice. Just recently I've started doing another trick which I'm going to do here as well. So I've got this image that needs to come up to the top and I'm going to rotate it. Image, uh, let's do a control T. Make it huge. Add screen. And reduce the opacity of that as well. It just adds a little bit of um, kind of debris to the to the image. If you're not happy with that, I'm actually not happy with the definition of that image. So I'm going to try a different one. This one I'm just going to drag. There we go. That's a little bit better. Change this to screen. Put the opacity of that down just adds a few imperfections to the image to make it look more natural um, so what that has done is added a bit of a color cast so what we can do is we can add a hue and saturation layer drop down the saturation a little bit in the reds yellows and greens not a huge amount but enough to just take out that weird orange cast that that previous um, layer added and then what we're going to do is we're going to mess it all up by adding our own color cast layers so I'm just going to grab a nice red, a nice red, and I'm just going to go, the light seems to be coming from this side of the image, so I'm just going to go like that, and then I'm going to switch up to orange, and paint that down there. This is going to become a soft light layer, it's kind of like a fake light leak, and then we're just going to drop the opacity of that down to a point where it's noticeable but not com not like massively intrusive on the image and then we're going to do another layer and this one's going to be red 
and green and blue again this one's going to become in fact better still I'm going to add that to there and I'm going to drag that one to there and I'm going to attach that to that layer boom and there we go that's a nice funky looking effect do you not agree um, so I'm pretty happy with that Our output image looks good um, you don't have to do things the way I do them obviously but this is just a way that I would create uh, some interesting effects and I can sort of play around with the opacity of this layer as well until it's at a level where I'm happy that it's where it wants to be but I'm pretty happy with that overall image so thanks ever so much for watching guys I hope you found that interesting entertaining informative etc let me know what you think in the comments below please do and I will see you in the next one. But until then, you take damn good care of yourselves, all right? Bye-bye.